In episode 1, we created the traffic eliminator, but we didn't really take a close look at how it functions simply because there wasn't enough traffic then. But now we are at 15,000 population, so let's see how she is doing. Uh, so for the most part, she is functioning as intended, but let's go see how it actually works. So the idea is traffic comes from the interchange and then they are immediately filtered going in this direction. So if you want to go to, let's say, the north, you have to take this avenue and then take a right. There is no other way to go here unless you go in this direction or turn right in order to enter here. Now, if you wanted to take, uh, if you wanted to go south, you you still need to go up uh, up north and then take this roundabout in order to cross this bridge, and then you are here. And in order to exit, you will take uh, this road and you will exit out. So this is a very very smooth flow and that is how it works uh, let's take a closer look on how this bridge uh, is functioning so uh, it may appear that it's going in the wrong direction but the direction of this roundabout is actually dependent on the uh, the bridge itself so if you look at it the vehicles will turn right immediately keep turning right so if i made it go the other way if i made it turn right and when it gets here it's gonna have to cross and we don't want that otherwise vehicles will be crossing uh towards each, uh you know against each other which is not which is something we are trying to prevent uh it may seem slightly i mean if you are not like confident with this you could actually try to improve it uh, a little more so what i can do is we can make some of these into uh further one-way roads so for instance uh let's make this go there and this will go outward and that'll be the same on this side. Uh, in this direction, I will do the same exact thing, but it's going to be uh, the opposite way because I, I have a plan that I will discuss later. Okay, that will also help improve the flow. All right, so that was episode one. And in episode two, we started to introduce transportation into uh, uh, at least the beginning of the city so i created the uh, high capacity uh, high speed uh, train uh, right here and also in this area uh, it is also connected to a tram route so the tram uh, the idea for the train of course is to connect the uh, the tiles together so i have uh, a train station here and we're gonna have somewhere there somewhere here and then here it will connect there and then within the tile, we are using trams to kind of filter everyone into this train station. So the idea is we are trying to reduce the number of cars being used by using the uh, rail system. And uh, as much as possible, the only vehicles that you want on the road would uh, preferably be just the trucks, you know, delivering goods and that is the idea and that is what we are doing every episode i am trying to sh like help ways on how to reduce the number of cars all right so uh so this works but how long will it work uh it, this is going to fail eventually but the reason why we have this in the beginning is because you don't have like enough tiles available and then some players would have traffic even just at 2000 population or less so something like this will help you know in the beginning so in a sense uh, the traffic eliminator is also like a uh, traffic with training wheels it is another way to call this but now that we are you know we have some tiles available the city is going to continue to grow and this will no longer be effective so with that said uh, this is where we are going to discuss road networks all right, so I've already uh, discussed the idea of uh, rail and within the tile. Uh, now we're going to go into the actual road system. So where do you put interchanges and when? So basically here, uh, so I plan to unlock this tile and that tile. Uh, I have, I'm have. i probably going to discuss the 25 tiles because that is announced for console. Um, in any case, uh, so the interchange, we have one here. So like just like the uh, high-speed transport you want an interchange basically on every tile and you also want a highway there 
because the further away so for example we have this tile and then we have another tile here and then there is no highway like nearby so all the vehicles is gonna have to bottleneck there so that's basically what's happening here so uh, if i continue to zone this area and we continue to grow it is going to further bottleneck here and this will no longer matter so this is why you we need to create an interchange here in between at some point so that is exactly what i am going to do right now so i am preparing for the future every episode we are preparing for traffic okay so this is where we left off and what i usually do is i check the status of the city so for instance i go first with electricity and we notice that it's low uh, let's check the others our sewage is also low garbage is kind of in midway and healthcare wow look at that we got 2600 sick people i don't think we have a single hospital so this is why it's important to check things uh fire hazard yeah we got yeah we got fire issues on this side police uh we need at least one more and finally our education okay we need elementary school and maybe one high school would be good and let's actually check the budget see this is why it's important to check so i forgot to do this in the last episode so maximum for all should be up to 12 otherwise it would start uh they would abandon all right so let's start with the first one which is electricity so this is again temporary um temporary until we get like all of this into level five oops it's not displaying so we need this level five we need that level five and we need the others level five as well so i'm just gonna go ahead and add in the uh, power and we also need sewage okay that takes care of power and water uh, you notice that we have some abandoned buildings and i'm just gonna ignore it so again, uh, we're not going to focus on this area. Our main focus is here simply because our demands is asking for more residential and commercial. So we're going to provide that while fixing uh, future traffic. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and like redo this area. So I'm going to dezone them. So again, if you're going to dezone anything uh, as much as possible, you could only dezone like low density if you dezone high density it's going to cause a major death wave this will not be as painful compared to dezoning high density all right so what am i doing my plan is to create an avenue going this way and it's going to connect to this tile so we're going to have an avenue going across and then you'll connect there and we will also have a service interchange here I'm going to create this as a new zone type. They will be local and organic produce for commercial and then residential will be the stuff sufficient uh, for a different building model. 
All right, so I clicked on it. You can see the icon that it's that it's the uh, self-sufficient. So these guys here are going to dezone and rebuild as the self-sufficient buildings. So this traffic is going to occur until all the two thousand people that were sick. Wow, that's a lot. I and mean, we only have 800 capacity, but eventually it will go down as all the citizens are being uh, cured. There's actually a 2x4 parking lot, but I don't know how to make that appear. It, it doesn't seem to be in the uh, find it mod. I don't know. So for now, I'm just using the 2x2, two two, which also still works. All right, so uh, we have our tram stops here. Now let's uh, divert them on this side. All right, so we created our hospital. And so on this end, I am going to create another schoolyard. So this time around, I'm going to be using the community community school as like the the front. And then uh, instead of having something like this, we'll we'll have it over here. So this is why I prefer the uh, self-sufficient uh, low density residential is because majority of the houses already come with trees and then when you add in more trees it just blends in together quite nicely so when you zoom out it really looks nice and it's nice and low where you make everything else more prominent so it really has a place in the city so uh, green cities is definitely my top five uh, DLCs. And we are now level four with the ore, no, no, forestry. So yeah, slowly and surely that is going to level up. And once it's all complete, we are able to create our harbor. Okay, this looks really good. I, I like what we have here so far. So this is a good medical facility. And then we have our schoolyard here. So we got mixed uh, buildings. So we have a high school and the elementary school with the generic building style and I use the community school as like the the kind of like the main office of the school and uh, let's see so this I actually missed to change the direction so let me fix that now okay so most likely it wasn't functioning 100 percent and it was not in the right direction all right so the purpose of this is of course to kind of reduce the amount of bottlenecking on this end so we open this up and as you can see some vehicles are choosing to take this which is a great thing so that will definitely reduce that and we are we are going to reduce it even further when we unlock this and we need to create another one on this end so i'm going to prepare for that and uh so again you want to filter everything using the uh the medium or large uh roads so i am going to convert this So here I'm going to show an alternate way of making a roundabout. So this, uh, instead of just a full roundabout, I actually have a bridge going over. 
So it actually helps reduce the amount of uh, traffic on your roundabout if you have uh, a road that just goes directly right across. And the kind of a key thing for roundabouts is the bigger the roundabout, there is more space so that there is like less uh, cars backing up in these areas. All right, let's go ahead and continue to pacify the residential and uh, commercial. However, uh, I actually want to develop our uh, fishing industry. So I'm going to create that over here. Uh, it will not be finalized. I basically, uh, there's a number of fish that you need to uh, catch until you kind of get the final uh, building type. Similar to what the industries and park life uh, means of unlocking buildings. Okay, so for now, this is uh, all we're going to do on this area because uh, we have to wait until we get a certain amount. So in order to get the, the last uh, fishing harbor, you need 2,000 fish caught. And also for the farms, you need up to 3,200,000. 3, 3, what did I say here? 2 million? Yeah, 2 million. Uh, so in order to create a... Uh, in order to catch fish, you need to create a route for your fishing. And the, the way this works is the longer the route, uh, actually, you, you don't need to make it extremely long as long as it reaches 100%. So for this one, I'm going to make that slightly short. And then we're going we're gonna to experiment to make it a little longer than the past one. All right. So the uh, fishing ships are out. And as they travel, they like uh catch fish and then so as soon as they reach 100 percent they're gonna start speeding up so you can see here it says catching uh shellfish so he's moving and moving and when he reaches 100 percent he's just cruising that means he's just doing nothing at all so that means our line is actually too long we need to make it shorter so this is extremely long so yeah a lot of players uh, they make a mistake of making an extremely long line but if you want to be efficient, uh, you, you just got to make it short uh, up to 100%. But, you know, it, if you also want to make it longer just for, you know, aesthetics, then that's also uh, as long as you have that purpose, then that's OK. OK, so for those who doesn't know um, the so here, the color will tell you the fish type. So this is sh uh, shellfish. The first uh, fishing harbor will catch any fish type however the the size of the fish is actually smaller the best fishing ship is definitely the tuna fishing harbor but this is difficult to find you need a dark blue so it has to be heavy and uh, like this so this is dark blue so it's a deep water and it's also uh, a very it needs to have a very strong current uh, in order to have tuna in it so as you can see, all right, this guy seems to be, yep, he is 100% still. Where does it end? So I need to fix this. I'm going to fix all of this and then uh, we'll get back to the city. Okay, let's check again. Okay, that's pretty close enough. Yep, that's pretty close enough as well. I think this is okay. 8, 9, 100. Okay, that's pretty good and yeah the, the reason why you also want this 100 percent or as close as possible is so that you can gather fish more quickly and this also comes with a fish market so i'm just gonna plop it down here and there is also a fish factory so the the difference with this is it uh the fish factory will turn the uh the fish from harbors and farms turn them into canned fish which is delivered to shops in commercial zones while the fish market uh, sells directly to customers without processing it into goods uh, which is better uh, for me I like to have both because it's nice to have more than uh, one building type as much as possible I try to build all so right now again we are not finalizing this area I just need to 
put this down as part of the requirements and this is a reminder for me so this okay so yeah this will deliver and that icon should disappear all right so we'll leave this alone and continue developing our residential and commercial All right, we reached level five for our uh, farming and we have a glimmer of demands for industrial offices. So let's just continue uh, zoning residential and commercial. So that would also help uh, increase the industry demands. Oh, you know what we forgot to do is to change the uh, the this into an actual bridge.
And in this area, we're going to create a new district type, which I already have here. And it is going to be the self-sufficient building, which is click on this and it will convert all the residential, the low density residential or including high density, if there are any into self-sufficient. And for our commercial, we are again going to go with local and organic produce. Uh, this is from the Green Cities DLC, uh, which I really enjoy because the building models are quite low, so it helps emphasize other buildings around it. And then we are also going to create a, uh, a new facility area. Uh, so for instance, we have a schoolyard and then we have a, uh, we have a, a hospital uh, with the child and elder, elder care building, which I think is really cool, a, a really neat idea. The other thing that most players uh, miss to add is to create like a disaster response uh, facility. So that is exactly what I'm going to uh, be building uh, here. So the disaster response building, uh, what it does is, uh, where is, where is it? Uh, here. What it does is it looks for survivors in any buildings that are ploppable. Uh, I'm not going to name any specific building because any building I say will be the wrong answer. So let's just say any building that is demolished, it will um, look for survivors and you can rebuild it instead of uh, repurchasing it. Uh, so when it comes to coastline, uh, like building roads, notice how I have on some parts uh, kind of like it's hugging the key while the other areas is much more, uh, there's much more of a gap. And then the pattern continues where it starts to hug the key again. This is a really, really neat way of uh, building around it so that it doesn't become too redundant. And the, the space is actually really nice for... Uh, adding in plantations because what makes your city more attractive is actually the the trees not more of the the buildings so if you see this this is extremely redundant while uh when you have things that break it apart such as unique buildings uh pathways and trees really makes your city look more appealing as a reminder to everyone, feel free to comment down below on any questions you may have about the episode and I will do my best to answer in the comments or in a future video. There is also a Discord channel or other obvious uh, social platforms to get in touch with the obvious community. There are other inquiries that I have not yet responded to such as what mods do I use or what color correction theme do I use to improve the look of the city. I do plan to make these responses more accessible, such as in a video short, which I am learning how to make. Okay, let's check out what we have so far. So here's our disaster response unit with accompanying buildings. So we got the fire helicopter and also the police helicopter. So that is pretty neat. And they have a, you know, a place to exercise. Uh, I zoned a few high density residential, not too much, just these guys. And of course on this, you could also start decorating, you know, just by adding a few assets on, uh, on the side. Uh, just try not to overdo it because we are expecting to have a ferry going through here. Um, let's uh, check out the the school campus right or here. So the one the one that we created here. I really really enjoy these trees. I can't emphasize that enough. 
and that's how i kind of you know decided to create like a parking area and that's where um, you know our trams will come in same goes with this so that i could do this one uh, i really enjoy this idea as well having the uh the elder and child care building right next to the hospital that's really really cool uh, but in like our first episode, we created this simply because we didn't really have enough space. Um, I'm not sure if I want to redo it or relocate it because these designs are definitely much better, uh, especially when you have mixed buildings. So notice how I have uh, this high school model and then this community school, which is a which is an ele elementary school. Same goes with this. And then even though these guys are the same building, but since they are like separated, it it, you don't really notice that it's the same so this kind of design is really neat um i do however understand that i am losing an opportunity of uh increasing land value because they're all just in one area um like it's much more efficient if you like kind of scatter them around but i've done that like in the first couple of years of playing city skylines and i find that this having a design like this is actually really really neat and if you look at the land value look at it it's, it's all green so it didn't really matter as much if i like kind of scattered the you know the the buildings apart uh so that's why i kind of stopped doing that um this thing uh you know let's just add a few more buildings here it seems a little empty and lonely Okay, so we added in the domes it's not any much uh it's not great but it is better than it was before when it was completely empty and i also added in more pathways uh just to help uh, the you know just to fill in the space uh pathways and trees really helps a lot especially just to kind of break it apart from the rest of the city and uh yeah there you go this is uh what we have for this episode i was Oh, we also created or actually just kind of improved this one just uh just made it a little more fancy uh we're in preparation for you know developing on the other side uh i was actually hoping to like finalize or at least have our industries at level five but unfortunately the city is wants more homes instead of more workplaces so a lot of people want to move in okay so let's uh check out like our traffic flow uh, since we built this and look at that it's mostly green uh, that is something you like to see our our population is now twenty two thousand. uh we occasionally have abandoned buildings but i actually like that because it tells you the viewer that we don't have like no abandoned mods so i am really really balancing out the game so it, it makes you like see that it is a legit uh gameplay um what else other issues that we had we had like 2006 citizens but now we've only just one hospital you know eventually everybody was uh healed uh and this part uh let's check the the status of this so we have the salmon fishing unlocked um we need another 2000 actually we don't really need to do anything and eventually all of this will unlock uh same goes with this so you know we'll just keep it at this and then eventually we're going to develop this area and on a final note with the uh, traffic eliminator or traffic uh, training wheels uh so how is this useful uh it, this will definitely be best used in the beginning of your city or when you start and the way i advise how how to use it is for instance if you're right side driving keep all your residential and commercial on the right side while all your industries are on the left and it would be an extremely smooth experience for i don't know maybe up to ten thousand or more simply because all your industries are exiting in just one direction going outward so if you had it on this side there's going to be too many um, uh, crisscrossing that will cause traffic so the traffic eliminator is still quite uh, valid and it does uh serves its purpose and i really really enjoy this i mean the reason why i actually created this was i i just developed it due to the bridges i love this idea there, there's a bridge and then there's another pedestrian bridge it, it just really looks cool i don't think anyone can deny that this this looks 
you know really fancy um not really necessary but it is really cool in any case if you are looking for more educational city management tips while maintaining an aesthetically pleasant design hit that subscribe button and comment down below if you have any questions that wasn't clear in the video this is captain obvious thank you for watching and for choosing to fly with obvious airlines have a great day and i will see you in the next flight